Hi, I'm Phil Salmoni and welcome back to this video series on finding suitable alternate parts for your designs using Octopart. If you haven't already, make sure to check out the first two videos in this series, which will be linked down below in the description box. In this video, I'd like to show you how to use Octopart to find suitable alternate field effect transistors for one of my designs. So let's get started. Please do make sure to check out the first two videos in this series on finding alternate electronic parts, as you might not be going to as much detail as those two videos for this video as well, because hopefully by now we are used to the Octopart interface, although we will go through it in this video again for field effect transistors in particular. Again, links under the description box below. The design we have been looking at in this series of videos is of course this micro quadcopter control PCB where we've found suitable ceramic capacitors as well as a new suitable inductor for this battery charging IC in the top left of this PCB. In this video, I'd like to show you how to choose suitable field effect transistors. We can see we have four of them on the PCB here, which act as very, very simple DC motor drivers. So for this, we have to be wary of the current requirements, maybe the RDS on, so on state resistance, the gate threshold voltages, and so on. So there's a few parameters, of course, we have to take care of, and we can use Octopart to help us narrow down on suitable parameters and select the right component for this specific application. Now, as this is a micro quadcopter control PCB, the actual motors that enable this quadcopter to fly are rather small. These are coreless, brushless DC motors. We can expect a current consumption on the order of a couple of hundred milliamps, maybe one amp maximum as its stall current. So therefore, the actual field effect transistors we see here don't have to be particularly large parts. Jumping over to look at the schematic, the drive circuitry is incredibly simple for these types of motors. I have my field effect transistor, for example, Q1 here, with a gate series resistor and a gate pull down resistor driven by a 3.3 volt logic signal of my microcontroller, which performs the rest of the control algorithms for this quadcopter PCB. The motor is then connected via a Molex Pico blade connector, J4 in this case here. We have a flyback diode D6 and some local bypassing and decoupling at C40. And we can see if we zoom out a bit, this exact circuit is replicated in total four times for the four quadcopter motors attached to this PCB. So in the case, for example, we might have a stock shortage, maybe this DMG230 part isn't exactly what we want. Let's see if we can find similar suitable alternate parts for this field effect transistor. For us, and this is skimming through it quite quickly, importantly, we need to know our maximum current, our expected average currents, and what type of control signal will be driving the gate. I'm not using any fancy gate drivers for this, so I will need a logic level MOSFET, so something that can be driven from a 3.3 volt logic signal, low current from a microcontroller, and that has a comparatively low on-state resistance as the minimum essentials of this microcontroller. The actual supply voltage Vsys is from a single lithium ion battery, so maximum expected voltage across drain to source might be something like 4.2 volts around that region, so not particularly high in any case. So the actual specs on, for example, this field effect transistor aren't too critical and probably fairly easily achieved. So let's see what parts we can find on Octopart. We won't be getting into detail of how to select an appropriate FET. Depending on the situation, there's plenty of information on the internet for this. For example, this Diodes Inc. selecting the right MOSFET for motor drive application document available online. So a quick web engine search will yield quite a few different results. So I'd strongly suggest checking those out if you're interested for your own designs. We will be going straight over to Octopart to find a suitable FET, at least narrowing down the selection of available field effect transistors. As you'll see, there are quite a few of them available. By this video number three, you are probably quite familiar with Octopart and its search tools as well as filtering tools. So I won't be going into terribly much detail as the process is very, very similar as you'll see to the previous videos. On Octopart.com, Again, you can use the search tool, or my preferred method is going via the filter selections in the top left menu, electronic parts. We are looking for discrete semiconductors in this case, and there we have diodes, thyristors, and transistors. And we're, of course, are looking for transistors, and in our case, we're looking for MOSFETs. Right at the bottom here, if we click on this, we are greeted with our usual Octopart search interface, which is great because it's very, very similar across all these different types of parts and components. For us, we would like to show the filters. So on the right hand side, click the show filter plus button and we can see our usual filters as before. However, as this is a different type of part, it isn't a capacitor, it is an inductor. In this case, it's a field effect transistor. We can see we already have a few different filters compared to other components, such as the maximum drain to source voltage, 
continuous drain current, threshold voltages, and so on, specifically tailored to the part that we're currently looking at. Plus, we already have a few conditions that we want. I want to stay with the same package type that we have in the design, and that happens to be a SOT 23 three pin part. So a fairly small pin package with three pins, I would like to stay with the same footprint and hopefully with the same pinout. Then moving over to the right hand side with these filters, we can see we have filters we just looked at before. But of course, if you'd like to look at different filters, we can go to the add new filter button on the right hand side, click on that. And we have many, many different filters we can add on in addition, if you're very, very specific about what you want to find. For instance, for field effect transistors, we have very specific elements that are specifically applicable field effect transistors, such as breakdown voltages, power dissipations, and so on. But of course, you can also select compliance filters and of course, supply chain status, which is very, very useful. Of course, depending on your situation, you might want to use a variety of these filters to help narrow it down to a specific selection or subsection of parts that might be suitable. In this case, I'm just going to show you some typical filters you might be selecting for a field effect transistor. And these are essentially the filters you already see here and that Octopart suggests. These are some of the most common filters. For instance, the continuous drain current, as we talked about for this specific application, maybe something up to about one amp is completely suitable and we can probably go far below that. What's also important is the on state resistance. Now, this, of course, is dependent on, for example, the gate source voltage you apply and several other parameters. But this is a nominal value that we can see on the column on the right hand side, this RDS on max. And we would like to, of course, typically keep that as low as we can to minimize our losses, to minimize the voltage drop across our field effect transistor once we turn this on or fully on. Similarly, for the threshold voltage, so this is the gate threshold voltage, for a logic level signal applied to the gate, for the case of this design where we have a 3.3 volt microcontroller, we want to choose a threshold voltage that is quite a bit below that maximum of 3.3 volts. So this could be one volt or less, a typical logic level field effect transistor. So we could go through, select, for example, different threshold voltages and ranges of threshold voltages, such as 400 millivolts, 800 millivolts, just a very simple example, and immediately we can see several results are being found. Alternatively, what we could do is just with pretty much next to no filter selected, so just the case package and the type of part we're looking for, we can scroll down and see we've already narrowed our selection down to 412 parts, not having selected anything. We see our typical price and availability tab on the left hand side where we can go through individual parts. We can see what distributors there are, level of stock and typical pricing for units of 1, 10, 100 and more. So that's one way of looking at this, but what I like quite specifically is the part specifications app. So if I click on this, this gives us somewhat of a spreadsheet or matrix view of the data where we have the parts on the left hand side on the first column. And then we have, for example, market data, such as typical price, how many authorized sellers there are, the availability, so total stock across all of the sellers, as well as the FET parameters themselves. And here in these columns, for example, we can sort, for example, by threshold voltages, ascending, descending, RDS on the typical field effect parameters, but also clicking on, for example, these little at symbols. Let's, for example, look at the threshold voltage. If I click on the at, we can type in a range. If I want to go from a threshold voltage of 0 0.1 to maybe one volt without having to click on in these individual checkboxes, I can filter down to this range. So if I type that in, click apply, we've immediately narrowed down our search to about 30 results. So I can do something similar, for example, for the RDS on. If I click on the little at again in that column, and I can say I want a maximum RDS on of maybe, let's say, 100 milli ohms. And anything below that is fine. I don't have to enter a value in the minimum. Click apply. And now we've narrowed our results down to 15. So this might be a good starting point. And of course, you can change those parameters. You can look for different things, apply these filters, for example, to the drain current and so on. But this might be a good starting point of how to look for suitable devices. So rather than just selecting the filters up here, I might go to the part specifications panel and apply these ranges to these filters. We could then sort by price ascending, and then we can look at, for example, also the life cycle status and manufacturer life cycle status, looking at active parts. So for example, this MGSF2 NO2 has 10 resellers, half a million in stock at about 20 cents a part. We see we have a VDSS of 20 volts. That's completely fine because we're only running at about four, four and a half volts. Continuous drain current up to about three amps, which is perfect for us. We need far less than that. We're adding some sort of safety margin, threshold voltage of about one volt and an RDS on about 85 milliohms. So therefore about at one amp, an 85 milliwatt loss. 
And of course, we can scroll further to the right and we can see there are many, many other parameters that Octopart immediately shows us all of these different parts and we can compare these parts very, very easily. So in our particular design, very quickly, just by going Octopart, not having to scan across many different distributors, vendors and manufacturers themselves, we can, with a very, very quick, simple Octopart search, find many suitable parts that we could use as a replacement for our design. If you're happy with that choice, for example, let's click on this MGSF2 by OnSemi, we can get more detailed information for that specific part. We can jump to the manufacturer page, we can see which distributors sell this part, the inventory history, as well as jump to data sheets straight away. If you'd like to then integrate that part into, for example, your eCAD tool, then very nicely, Octopart shows us directly that we could get, for example, the 3D models, such as step files, as well as symbols and footprints through various sources. So all on one single page and on one single website, we can find all this information very quickly and very directly, which is great for us as designers or if you're in procurement or any similar role that requires this information. So jumping back to the design in Alton Designer, where we had our original part choice for these field effect transistors, I can copy over the name of this part we found using Octopart and go to Altium Designer's Manufacturer Part Search as one example, or of course you can create your own custom footprint and schematic symbols. I'll paste the name in here, press enter. As we can see here, it happens that Altium Designer has this part available in the Manufacturer's Part Search and in their vault. So to add it to the design, I can just right click, place, and I can then integrate this part into my design. Make sure to check that the pinout might change even if it's the same package and make sure you do do the calculations for the part you're replacing. We've skimmed over quite a bit of information and detail in this video for the sake of time. I hope you saw how quickly and easily we can utilize Octopart to find suitable alternate parts for our designs. In this case, this was a field effect transistor, but we also looked at parts such as inductors and capacitors. In future videos of this series, we will look at more intricate parts such as microcontrollers and integrated circuits to see how Octopart can help us very easily find suitable parts in that regard as well. Thanks again for watching and I hope to see you in the next part of this video series. Bye bye.